The blockchain space is rapidly advancing, and every few years we see an explosion of new use cases come onto the scene that ultimately cause cryptocurrency markets to trend higher. In the past, we've seen things like DeFi, NFTs, and the metaverse come onto the scene. And now that cryptocurrency markets are down, people are wondering, hey, what are the next set of use cases that are going to bring in the next wave of users that we can take this technology to its full potential? And in this video, I want to talk about an important use case that could be a next big catalyst for Web 3.0 adoption. So before we get into that, you know, if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to learn how to master a blockchain step-by-step -step to start to finish, then head on over to adaptuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. All right, so let's talk about a new use case that could be a big catalyst for Web 3.0 adoption. And one reason I'm so particularly excited about this use case is because crypto has two big criticisms from the outside world. Number one is they talk about it being like a, you know, solution and search for a problem, which I think is kind of crazy. But number two is that they think that all the use cases for crypto are just around financial speculation. So this use case today clearly is at odds with both of those views. And so that's why I want to talk about it. So just recently, Vitalik Buterin, you know, the mastermind behind Ethereum, proposed a Web 3.0 identity solution called Soulbound Tokens and how these could be the credentials of the future. And essentially what these will do is will help users gain insights into others' real world activities, accomplishments, likes and dislikes, something like a glimpse into their soul. So these Soulbound Tokens are basically going to be non-fungible tokens or NFTs that are not transferable by the recipient. So essentially, once you receive a soulbound token, you can't take it out of your wallet. And that that unique crypto wallet is going to be called, you know, your soul. So there's lots of potential use cases for this, but let's just talk about one that pops up right here. So instead of a Web3 hiring manager calling up your alma mater or checking LinkedIn, he could check your on-chain resume for a transaction selling the university's soul, transferring a soulbound token to you. So basically, as you know, Vitalik says, souls can encode the trust networks of real economy to establish provenance and reputation. And also soulbound tokens have the ability to decentralize power away from major institutions and companies towards users instead of private database owning your credentials, you would own the keys to your own credentials. So let's look at a quick diagram of this you know, example that they're talking about right here. So essentially, let's say that you are going to apply for a job. Okay, this is you the job applicant right here, you're gonna have a crypto wallet, which is essentially gonna be like your soul. <laughs> this sounds a little dystopian, but just roll with it here. And then you have an employer that can see you know, your entire history on chain. And then anybody that you have, you know, past experience with, let's say you got a degree, I just put, you know, Harvard University as an example here, like they would give you an NFT, or the NFT contract would essentially issue an NFT that would go to your wallet, and then you can't transfer it out of your wallet, like once you've got it, you've got it. And the same thing for your prior employer. So say, you know, you went to school here, and then you had a job here, then you can just quickly glimpse at that on chain and see all that history. Now, you might say, what if you receive a token that you didn't want? Well, I think that can easily be solved by some sort of two-way signature process where like you have to sign to receive the token and then somebody else has to like sign to, you know, get get the token to you. And then you can check that the NFT was that it actually comes from the contract from the reputable authority. And so why is this particular implementation important? Well, again, this is a non-transferable NFT. So once you've got it, you can't take it out of your wallet. And that's gonna be a big shift in how a lot of the NFTs work now because you know, most use case for NFT now are basically people sort of like, you know, speculating on things, hoping for the price to appreciate later. So they want to take their NFT and then trade it at some point on a marketplace like OpenSea. With a soul bound token, you can't do that. And that's by design. It's sort of like a once you've got it, you can't take it away because you wouldn't want to take your, you know, uh, college diploma or your past job experience and be able to transfer to somebody else because that completely breaks down the, you know, the integrity of the system. And so what benefits does it actually provide with blockchain technology rather than just, you know, getting a digital piece of paper from somebody else and then like emailing back. Well, this is a better, faster, cheaper scenario, okay? So you can you can basically increase trust because it's going to be a lot harder to fake, you know, the credentials on chain if they're issued from a reputable place, like let's say Harvard University starts issuing NFTs upon graduation for their resume, then an employer, instead of having to like call them, it's you can just take a quick look. And then that saves time to get, you know, validation on the trust. There's greater transparency in this process because it's all verifiable on chain. It's immutable, you know, so you can't 
change that record once you've got it. And it also has the benefit to the end user to this information being owned by you on chain and not just like stuck in somebody else's database. So it's more decentralized in that way. All right, so let's talk about some objections or some problems, potential problems with this implementation. So one of the first big things that comes to mind is definitely what happens like if you lose your private key, right? What if you lost the key to your soul and like you can't get the password back to your entire, you know, on-chain reputation? So basically, you know, they're talking about this being crypto natives biggest lose, you know, nightmares losing this. Well, uh, the co-authors of the original paper talked about some ideas, and one is like a collective wallet recovery. So basically, there's already ways to do this where like, let's say you want to, uh, you know, recover somebody's private key with like a Shamir share or something like that. It's a similar idea where essentially you could have other people essentially vouch for you that you own uh, a particular identity to, to be able to reconstruct it so that you can sort of get your soul back. But this, of course, would require members of a certain community to consent. So another big objection is what about spam? Again, what if somebody just sends like a credential to your wallet that you didn't want? Well, there are some solutions to this. They talked about how to filter out um, or burn you know, NFTs without using gas. I could see the burning mechanism without using gas being a good way to do it. Also, just the mutual consent of receiving it, right? Like if somebody wants to send you this, you have to say, yes, I want it with some sort of digital signature uh, before it goes in your wallet. So I think there's some ways to to filter out um, the spam problem here. All right, so let's talk about some other applications of soulbound tokens, because here we've got a really simple example of just, you know, some credentials that are issued on the blockchain that other people can see these credentials. But let's talk about some more sophisticated and advanced applications that are pretty creative. And I think once you hear these, like a bunch of light bulbs are going to start going off. Some of these actually come out of this white paper, all right, for the actual project itself. I'll put a link to this down in the description below, but this is the white paper, you know, with Vitalik actually on it. But one of the use cases is lending okay so i think people are trying to unlock the potential for financial based lending on top of the blockchain that's under collateralized so let's let's take an example right so right now you can do savings and lending with DeFi, but you always have to over collateralize the loan which means you have to put down more than you're borrowing which somebody's like hey why would you even put down you know more than you're borrowing well it's usually for like shorting and other financial strategies okay but what if you want to actually make you know, loans in DeFi, or you can borrow more money than collateral than you're putting down. So let's say you want to buy a house, right? And you put 20% down for the house. Well, the house is the collateral, and it's worth more than your down payment, which is 20%. Okay. And then you can take out a loan for the remaining amount. So you can't really do this with blockchain right now, because you know, you would have to like, who, who's going to trust you? Yeah, this is potentially a use case for this. So what if you could have soul bound tokens that start to give you uh, lending history on the blockchain? So almost like a credit score where you could start to see like, okay, this person has ac- you know, actually paid off loans in the past and they're probably going to do it again under a certain like risk tolerance, okay? So you can get these soul bound tokens that you can't, you know, uh, send out of your wallet that, that show that, okay? And then the actual loan process itself could be, you know, a uh, model with soul bound tokens. So you could get a token whenever you get a loan, all right, and that represents the debt, and then you know you that that token can be revoked from the issuer, and then you can get a new token that says yes, you paid it off. Okay, and then you can see the history of that on chain that can help with your credit score and also the current loan at that point in time. Because again, these lo- these soulbound tokens are non-transferable. It's not that they can't be moved out of your wallet. It's that they can't be moved out of your wallet by you. Okay, maybe the issuer can send it and receive it. All right, but you can't just like go send it to somebody else and send it on a cryptocurrency exchange. Maybe you can burn it like we we're talking about earlier. But that's a way that you could potentially model lending, which is you know a huge use case. And so like a couple other use cases that just come to mind, you know, rapid fire here are definitely digital identity, which I think we're just scratching the surface for, like a way to prove who you are on chain, all right? And then you can take that identity anywhere. You're usually the entire network, not just each individual application, okay? Uh, and that can, you know, have a role in know your customer where you have to KYC. Well, like, you don't have to just always give your KYC information over to every single place. You could just do it once to set up your identity. And then, you know, you have that that soul bound token that proves things about you. This could even flow into zero knowledge proofs where like, you don't always have to give your age. Maybe you just want to prove that you're of a certain age, right? You know, decentralized autonomous organizations or DAOs could be, you know, the things that actually issue these soul bound tokens where they vote, you know, to prove that you uh, should get it. You can use it for event attendance, 
to prove that you were at an event. You could do for white listing, for NFT mints, you know, whatever. Now let's talk about how this could be a big point of adoption for Web 3.0, because especially right now, like at the time I recording this video, while the crypto markets are down, I'll people think like, hey, we're at the tail end of a, a bear cycle here. Like what's going to happen next? Well, almost every time we see, you know, a big leap forward in the crypto Web 3.0 space, it's because we have new use cases emerging that get people excited and that sort of fuels uh, these rallies that you know tend to happen for a few years. And so I do think that these this particular use case uh, could be one of those things that helps propel us into that next phase because that's what happens with Web 3.0. It, it jumps out and leaps. And one reason I'm so excited about this is because you know, uh, the, a lot of the criticisms of the crypto space are that it looks like a problem in search of a solution, which I think is kind of crazy because, of course, stable coins are way better than the current financial system. We can do so much with DeFi. You know, we're just scratching the surface. We can do with NFTs. But the other big criticism that crypto is only used for like financial speculation. And there's kind of some truth to a majority of those use cases. But that's one thing I'm really excited about this is because these soulbound tokens make some things in the world better, faster, cheaper. That's kind of the name of the game with technology. We're not just getting financial speculators come in to use them like there's huge incentives for people to actually start doing this in a decentralized way with smart contracts okay so that's an overview of soulbound tokens you know what they are why they're such a big deal and how they work and how they could be big for the future of web 3.0 adoption so let me know what you think down in the comment section below are we at a point where these could actually be useful do you see this ushering in a new way of web 3.0 adoption i want to hear from you so as always you know smash that like button down below subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and if you're as fast at this technology as I am, hey, maybe we'll actually code out a Soulbound token on this channel. So make sure you subscribe. Like I say, and turn on notifications. You're going to find by that video whenever it goes live. And if you want to get your hands dirty right now, start coding today. You can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find my free courses there. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. By the time you watch this video, we might have a Soulbound token video on there. And if you like those videos and you went to the next step, or hey, you just want to go for the throat and actually master Web 3.0 and blockchain step by step from start to finish and break into the blockchain industry as fast as possible, then definitely head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. You don't have to be an expert to get started now. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.